The epilogue. Seven months later. Tucker touched the box in his pocket to make sure it was still there. He'd spent a week shopping for the perfect ring, but had found nothing he liked. Thankfully, when he'd mentioned it to his father, whom he was now talking to on a regular basis, he'd suggested Tucker's mother's ring. The ring was simple and elegant, just like Shelby, and he couldn't wait to see the look on her face when he slid it on her finger. What better time than the reopening of the center? You ready? his father whispered in his ear. Tucker still couldn't get over the change in his father. After the heart attack, his father had cut back on his caseload. He'd begun spending more time with Whitley, and he'd even started attending church again, where he'd met a wonderful woman, Meredith. Yeah, thanks again, Dad. Tucker smiled at his father, glad for their mended relationship. Good luck, big brother, Whitley said as she tossed him a wink before continuing into the center with his father and Meredith. What was that about? Shelby asked as she rejoined him. She'd been conversing with her own family, who was now following his family into the center. Nothing, just wishing us luck. He searched her face for any clue she might have guessed his intentions for tonight. Are you okay? Her brow furrowed as she touched his arm. What? He realized he was staring and shook his head. Yes, I'm fine. Just excited to see what Kenzie's done with the place. After the Christmas party, Kinsey had realized she had a knack for decorating and had returned to college to work on her interior design degree. The Texas Tornadoes team, after seeing the center at the Christmas party, had agreed to donate a sizable amount of money to help renovate the center and hired Kinsey to head it. It had been a rush renovation because they couldn't close the center too long, but a local church had offered to let them use its building until the work was completed. Tonight would be the first time Shelby and Tucker would get to see the results. I'm sure she did an amazing job, but don't you think we're a little overdressed? Her hand slid down the side of her dark blue evening gown, as if she could smooth out the nerves she was feeling. Kenzie had planned a formal reveal. She'd gotten several wealthy families and business owners to attend by connecting the reveal to a donation dinner. Tucker turned to her and took her hands. We're not overdressed, Shelby. This is a huge deal and there are going to be a lot of eyes on you. You just need to remind yourself how amazing you are. A soft pink glow raced across her cheeks, making her even more beautiful. Thank you, Tucker. I just... I feel very out of my element. Ha! Well, now you know how I felt working at the center when I first started. Tucker had been completely out of his element. But he wouldn't change it for the world now. Not only had he met Shelby and the amazing kids but he had learned to value the important things in life, things like family and love. His hand touched his pocket again. He couldn't wait to propose to her. Her shoulders rose and fell with her deep breath. Then she tossed him a smile and lifted her chin. Okay, I'm ready. Shelby could never have imagined the center looking as it did now. The floor had been waxed and the walls redone, Instead of the sad, faded cream walls, they were now filled with kids' artwork and exploded with color. The carpet in the office and hallways had been replaced, as had the computer in the reception area. It almost looked like a brand new building. Tables covered in white tablecloths filled the gym area, and decorative candles and flower arrangements added pops of color. As Shelby and Tucker entered, those already seated stood and began clapping. Shelby couldn't believe how many people Kenzie had persuaded to come. Of course, she shouldn't have been surprised. Kenzie had a charming and persuasive personality. Here she is, the lady of the hour, Kenzie said from the front of the gym, where a makeshift microphone had been set up. Shelby, get up here and tell us about the new plans for the center. Tucker squeezed her hand and planted a quick kiss on her lips before motioning her to the front. As she walked through the crowd, butterflies awoke and took flight in her stomach. Speaking to large crowds of donors had always been nerve-wracking for her. Shelby took the mic and cleared her throat. First, I just want to say thank you to everyone who came out tonight. Didn't Kenzie do an amazing job on the interior of this place? Cheers and applause answered her question, giving Shelby the courage to continue. Well, thanks to a wonderful donation from the Texas Tornadoes, Not only were we able to redecorate, but we've also created a collaborative program. 
Once a month, a football player will host a day here at the center to teach kids about exercise, teamwork, and of course, football. This day will be free for all who are regular attenders at the center. And I'm pleased to announce that this program has brought in over 50 new children. Another round of clapping ensued. We'll be hiring a few full-time staff members to help accommodate our new numbers, as well as several part-time members, allowing us not only to serve the kids, but also to bring jobs to the community. This couldn't have been possible without our very first volunteer from the Texas Tornadoes. So would you please give a round of applause to Tucker Jackson? Shelby smiled as the cheers grew louder for Tucker as he approached the stage. She handed him the mic and moved to step back, but he caught her hand, holding her in place. Thank you, Shelby. I didn't know what to expect when I was first told I had to volunteer here, but I quickly learned that these kids had more to teach me than I could ever teach them, as did Shelby here. Many of you know that we've been dating for the last seven months. I would have been a fool not to pursue this amazing woman. But tonight you guys get to join in on what I hope will be our next step. He motioned to Kenzie, who Shelby hadn't even noticed had been waiting off to the side. Then he handed her the mic. Shelby's face clouded with confusion and then surprise as he reached into his pocket. He lowered to one knee and held out the box to her. As unobtrusively as possible, Kinsey held the mic so his words would carry as well. Shelby, you changed my life the day I met you, and I can't imagine a day without you in it. Would you do me the honor of becoming my wife? He flicked open the box and Shelby gasped and covered her mouth with her hands. Inside was the most beautiful ring she had ever seen. Tears blurred her eyes, and she was afraid no sound would come out of her mouth, so she nodded. Cheers took over the place as he slipped the ring on her finger. Though Shelby had prayed for a man, she had never expected God to send her one like Tucker Jackson. She supposed that just confirmed what she'd always known in her heart. God was an amazing, loving father, and life worked out better when you let him be in control. The end. If you enjoyed this story of Run With My Heart, be sure to look for Love on the Line coming soon 